There's one right there. That feels good. There's one. Wow. It's <laughs> a net. There, there we go. <laughs> good one. Real good one. Look at that beast. Beautiful. They got it. Wow, it's a big one, dude. That's what it's all about, man. Nice job, you two. Lundboats proudly presents the ultimate fishing experience. This week on Lund's The Ultimate Fishing Experience. Busy guide and Lund pro Sean Coulter takes every chance he gets to spend time fishing with his kids. As a father, he knows that keeping them engaged and having fun is the most important part of a good fishing trip. Simply put, kids need to catch fish, and usually lots of them. The summertime weed edge crappie bite is a good bet for finding that fast action kids need. A steady stream of fish good keeps job, kids dude. hooked. Dial in the weed edge crappie bite, and it won't take long for your kid to want to fish every chance they get. Just like you did when you were a kid. I just love fishing. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Hi there, this is Sean Coulter. Today we're here in northern Minnesota. Uh, super excited to get on the water uh, with my son. Jax Coulter. We're uh, gonna chase some, some crappies, midsummer crappies here on the weed edges. Uh, hopefully we'll have a couple of different approaches that, that'll help you not only stay excited as an adult, but, but really get the kids involved and, and have the, the kids having a great time on the water. So look forward to a, to a fun day here chasing midsummer crappies. So today we're, uh, we're heading to a small little backwater bay uh, on one of our local lakes here in, in northern Minnesota. And uh, uh, this time of the year is a great, great time to be out chasing, you know, really a bite, whether it's sunfish, crappies, bass. Um, and uh, we're gonna be chasing some crappies, uh, throwing a couple different presentations at them, uh, bobbers with, with some minnows, which is always a fun way. And, uh, uh, and then we'll probably throw some twister tails at them. So it's, it's, uh, it's a great time of the year. I look forward to, to hopefully teaching you a technique or two that'll, that'll help you enjoy some action mid-summer. So mid-July mid water temps can range, varying lakes uh, where we're sitting between 73 and 75 degrees. And, and when you're chasing crappies this time of the year, a lot of times midday, uh, you got to get right up in the in the weeds and, and get your presentation down in them. They're using the weeds as cover. Uh, occasionally, you'll have some 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 lakes where you can get on a good bite. Uh, that that may be on the outside edge of the weeds, or on a cloudy day, it might might be a little bit better. Um, usually, crappies this time of the year. There's a magical window in the evening. Uh, where they, they come to the come to the su surface of the weeds or come to the edge of the weeds, and uh, can make for some really fast action. But don't don't think that uh, midday crappies don't happen. It's it's something that uh, you might have to play around with where they're at, the depth of you know your lure. Uh, but boy, you get on a midday on a on a sunny warm day. It's it's a lot of fun and a lot of action, and and it can be done. Well, I got some good oh, ones right five here. Five of them right there. Ooh, there's a there's a decent one. Maybe the first real decent one of the day. They're starting. This cloud cover seems to be helping quite a bit. And just put a nice little fresh twister on there. These little uh, these little backwater lakes, you know, you got to kind of take the smorgasbord and not the biggest crappies in northern Minnesota, but certainly a nice fish. Lots of action. Perfect. That one was serious, like he came charging at it, hit it twice. That's good, that's a good start. All right, I got one. Got one, is it a good one, bud? Yeah, feels good. Ooh, it's a nice bluegill, look at that. That's pretty good one. On the twister tail. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, that's a little better one. Those bluegills, boy, they get into big schools this time of the year too. And a lot of times we find them running in the same size, where they're, uh, you know, you'll get some seven, eight, nine, ten inches, but they seem to run by size. Yeah, so hold it kind of on his belly, but don't oh, like it like this. Oh. There you go. There you go. Perfect. That's nice and easy release it in the water. There you go. All right. That's a big one. Yeah, average, I would say. <laughs> Bro, yeah. do you see that fight? Yeah. It's like a dog. Not huge. They're getting better, though, slowly but surely. The action is picking up. 
I am letting it work down the water column a little bit further. It hits that weed edge and it's just dropping down right now and they're starting to get pretty active. Closed captioning is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Oh, here comes one. Oh. As soon as I hit that outside weed edge, they're coming up to get oh, that's it. A, that's a nice one. Better that's one a nice one. Yep. That's a little better one. He oh. smoked that thing. Did he? Yeah. There's some good ones in there. I'm gonna drop it right down that weed edge. God, I got him. I got a big one. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a better one, bud. There we go. I love it. There's a pack on there. Oh, the buckets. And I mean, it's just a... Oh, that's a big one. That's a... Eh. No? Yeah, that's a big one. <laughs> that's better. Yeah, that, I mean, it's just a 30-second ounce. Well, there you go. Just a tiny little jig. A little higher? What do you think? <laughs> Pretty fun. <laughs> Pretty fun. Ready? Go ahead. Must have a little pocket of them up there, huh? Oh yeah, there's a load of them. Talk to them about what you're doing, Jaxie. How are you fishing that thing? There's a load of them. Just barely letting it sink about three or four feet. Just waiting for the rod tip to go down. Then you throw them. <laughs> you got the big ones, I got the little ones. <laughs> My twister came off. Yeah, yeah, here they come. Oh, there's one on it. There it comes in. You can see we're bringing it in with the forward-facing sonar. So technology these days is, you know, a huge part to everybody's success. And forward-facing sonar is something that's become kind of the, the hit of the fishing industry. And, and technology is a huge part of what everybody's doing right now. And, and uh, midsummer, when we're looking for crappies, one of the things I, I get a lot of people asking questions about is, what, what are you looking for? And, and for me, it's a point, a really weedy, good cabbage uh, point that, you know, maybe the weeds are three to four foot below the surface, even maybe a little bit lower. So there's area above the weeds for the fish to, to, to locate. But then uh, the, the, the weeds typically drop into a, into a pretty deep water area fairly quick. And it deep can be like 20 feet. It doesn't have to be 50 feet or anything. But if you can find a, a bay or a point uh, that's got good cabbage, uh, for, a, for, for kind of an extended period, you know, 20, 30, 40 yards uh, before it falls into that deep water. And as long as the weeds don't go to the surface, more times than not, you should be able to locate crappies. And, and really, it, it takes time. You gotta kind of go out and, and, and play around. And there's gonna be some days where the crappies are gonna be there maybe and they don't bite. And then there's gonna be other days where you go out and, you know, it can be 10 o'clock in the morning and there's every cast you're catching them. So, uh, you know, midsummer, don't be, don't be frustrated. Don't be scared to go out and try those weed edges. And and uh, the, the more weeds, the barrier, really. And, and uh, the areas can be pretty vast if you, if you find some. I mean, you might find a couple, two, three hundred yards of crappies, or it might be just a little corner. So you, you, you know, don't skip over anything and just keep looking, and, and you'll find them. And then, man, you want to talk about action. It can be better than spring or fall when they get into those open water basins. Um, weed, weed crappies, for me, are, are something that, Man, if, 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 if you get into the doldrums of summer and you want action, just go to the weed line. I guarantee you, once you find the crappies, you will you should be able to catch a lot of them. So there's a really good group of fish right there. Those are crappies. There's the top of the weeds, and that uh, that group of fish, as you can see, is sitting sitting right over the tops of the weeds. And now we just want to throw our bobber or twister in there. It's about four to five foot, and so we want to just throw it in about, about a foot below, two foot below the surface, and hang on. That's a big one. That's a better one? Yeah. There we go. Feels like it at least. Oh, yeah, that's better. There we go. That's a little better fish. 
Yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's you know, midsummer crappies. My, my son here, who's 12 now, has been fishing with me since I've got a picture when he was two years old doing the same thing. And, uh, you know, not all the time do you go out and get, get, get big ones, but the, you know, a lot of times with the panfish, you get the quantity and, and you get the, the rods bending and the bobbers going down and, and the smiles on the kids' faces. And, uh, you know, it's one thing midsummer that uh, is super special uh, when you find those little weed lines uh, man, you can get non-stop action, and, and today we've 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 done exactly that. It's an opportunity to, to bring you know not only kids but uh, adults. Man, for me, watching a bobber go down is is something that's that's truly special all the time. And and uh, if you get a chance, you know these little lakes with with good weed lines are a fun way to to catch them. A lot of times, uh, there's two techniques that we like to fish with. Um, a little twister tail with a 32nd to a 16th ounce jig. Um, and you just throw that thing out and you can let it sink a foot or two, maybe three foot below the surface and uh, just slowly roll that thing back in and that twister tail, you know, just spins in the water and, and crappies always like to feed up. So more times than not, you want to keep that bait above them. And then uh, the, the bobber presentation is pretty simple, a little crappie minnow and you take that hook and you hook it right kind of the middle part of the back so that minnow can go out there and swim. And uh, boy, that's, that's a tough combination to beat. You want to set that bobber a foot or two above the weeds and let the crappies come up and eat them. It's uh, two techniques that we like to use in the summertime here in northern Minnesota, and uh, it's tough to beat. Uh, sometimes they like the live bait, and sometimes it's just a little twister tail. Little guy. Uh, I saw it. Did you? It's decent. No, it's not a giant by any means. There's, God, there's two or three in there that are really good. Man, that's that same year class. God, there's, there's two we need to catch. Those two are good ones. That's a decent one. It's bigger than mine. <laughs> Having fun yet? Oh yeah. <laughs> so you know, a lot of people ask questions about rods and, and you know weights and and, and crappy fishing, pan fishing. It's uh, I like to use. I mean, a very versatile seven foot medium light um, rod. I, I use them for catching walleyes, rigging walleyes, jigging jigging walleyes to fish and pan fish. And, and there's nothing special about the line. A six to eight pound monofilament is all you, all you need. And you know, if you want to specialize or do something a little funner, there's there's rods out there that are, you know, seven foot ultra light and you could do a two or a four pound line. But but really for what we're doing today, this is this is just a seven foot medium light rod that I use for walleye fishing with a, with a six, six to an eight pound monofilament line. Right under the boat? Yeah. Another bass. A bass or you know. Whoa, don't break that rod. <laughs> See what you got. <laughs> Your favorite. Oh yeah. <laughs> For sure. Wow, well, crappy. And they're not giants, but they're certainly a lot of fun, boy, having those little rascals. And, and talk about good eats. I know at our house, uh, between the perch and the crappies, I think if you ask my wife more times than not, the crappies would, would probably take table fare over, over walleyes and, you know, uh, perch. Did you miss one? Yeah, yeah. that one would have been a big one. <laughs> they're always big when you miss them. Yeah. <laughs> As a guide and as somebody that grew up and had the opportunity to fish, it was it was uh, something that was really important to me early on. Um, both of my daughters, uh, you know, introducing them to fishing, and then to have my son uh, come a few few years few years later, and uh, um, you know, I, I wanted to give him the opportunities to enjoy the outdoors like I did growing up, and and uh, a lot of times for me, um, just getting him out on on a day like today, it's a beautiful day. Uh, in the summertime and, and finding a bite. So I've been fortunate to uh, 
uh, having fish tournaments with me at a young age and We've had many a days where I've had myself and my dad, who I take, uh, you know, who's I take fishing now. That my dad introduced me to the sport when I was young, and, and so being able to introduce the kids to the sports uh, of fishing and in the outdoors and hunting in general has been uh, been something that's been really important to me. And and to see the passion my son has now as a dad to want to do something that I love um, is is really cool. And and it and it you know now he's he's. Uh, He's at the age where he was able to, to get his boater safety and, and he's got his own boat now and he's able to take his buddies out and he's starting the new tradition of, of passing on the love for, for fishing with some of his friends and it's pretty neat to see uh, and have some success and, and uh, teaching him how to do it the right way and, and, and having him have a lot of fun doing it. Um, man, it it's, uh, means a lot to me and, and certainly my family and, and uh, if you get a chance, take a kid fishing every chance you get. I just love fishing. I uh, just want to talk about the, the 2075 Pro Guide. I've been super fortunate over probably the last 12 to 15 years uh, to be able to guide and, uh, and, and tournament fish uh, with the Pro Guide. And there's a number of features that, uh, you know, as, as not only a guide or, or a guy that's just out with my son, Jax, um, that, that make this boat super comfortable but, but super valuable when we're fishing tournaments. There's certain things that we really look for. And the one thing is the live walls, having multiple live walls. A lot of times we're fishing, fishing live bait and, and we've got a, a, you know, a huge live wall in the back that, uh, that allows us to keep our bait. And uh, in most tournaments now are, are, are catch photo and release tournaments, but, but it allows us to keep our leeches or our minnows uh, really lively. You know, more times than not, the storage space is humongous for us. I bet, you know, back in the day when we were, when I was guiding, and I was doing a lot of shore lunches. We'd have to bring firewood, and we'd have to bring, you know, the pan to go over the fire, and then containers with our food and our utensils and plates. And uh, so it's always nice to get that stuff out of the boat. And, and, and Lund has just done an incredible job of building this boat with as much width and as much storage, so we can get all our tackle, all of our supplies in there. And, and come tournament time, the rod lockers are, are second to none. I mean, we've got somewhere between 30 to 40 rods in the boat on any given day for a tournament and you, you just never know what you're going to need. A couple of the other features that I think are really important is uh, you know almost all of the, the, the storage units uh, have lockable uh, uh, latches on them which is you know if you're if you're uh, staying at a hotel in town or if you're you know whatever it is and you want to lock things up uh, it allows you to do that and so just a lot of really great features that, you know, when, when they say Lund is built by fishermen for fishermen, Lund has done a job that uh, is like no other uh, when it comes to creating the, the ultimate fishing boat, whether you're, you're out for a good time or you're tournament fishing or guiding, this, uh, this 2075 definitely has got you covered. Oh yeah, a little better. Oh yeah, that's a better one. That's a better one. Even the old guide gets lucky once in a while. Finally, and just that little old pink jig, and there you go. Perfect. Those things look healthy. So a lot of times with these crappies, you get you get uh, you get windows, you know, during the day, like we've seen today, where you you'll get some flurries, and the fish will move up, move in, move out, move up. But usually, as the day gets later, and as you get closer to that what I call kind of the bewitching hour, which is maybe the last hour, hour and a half of, of daylight. Um, a lot of times you'll see the bigger fish get active. And uh, you know, it, 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 every day is a little bit different. Crappies, you never really know for sure. But, but if th the one thing I do know in all the years of fishing them in midsummer is usually your better fish and the more activity is, is kind of later in the day. So if you're really just looking to get out and trying to put yourself in the best spot you can to catch fish, Maybe that later in the day from, you know, after dinner till, till dark is time that you want to try those little crappie areas that you're thinking about. From a catching a lot of fish standpoint, which is, you know, for kids, this is, man, you just about bring any kid out that's not really fished much, and this is, and this is a dream day for most of those kids. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Good job. They're all over it too. Oh, there's one. 
Straight up. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, the, the, definitely the average is better now. That's a nice one. You're going to sell them back. I got one. Little or big? It's decent. Right oh, yeah, that's a decent one there. Right up to the end. There you go. Yep. Oh, Jesus. Let's take that one. There you go. That was good. There he is. Big? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's big. Yeah. Is it a big one? Yeah, it's huge. Is it huge? <laughs> <laughs> How big is it? <laughs> uh, if you hold it closer to the camera, it's bigger. Really? Yeah. That's cool. Uh, oh, that's better, a little better. Ooh, there's a better one. There's a better one. A little better. Not as big as mine. No. Boy, they're sucking that thing down right now. Oh, man. The jig is completely, completely gone. There's so many out right there. <laughs> it's insane. Well, today has been one of them days where it's more about the, 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 the quantity than the quality, but you know what? When you're bringing kids out fishing and the, the, the rods are bending nonstop all day, you can't beat it. It, it, it makes the smile on even, even a dad's face. Uh, that's that's uh, memories that'll last a lifetime. If you get a chance, get out, enjoy what midsummer brings, and, and some days they're gonna be a little bigger, some days they're gonna be smaller, some days there's just gonna be lots of them, and today was filled with hook sets. And, uh, Really enjoyed it, and, and it was just a great day to be on the water. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like more information, check out lundboats.com or these other online outlets.